Jagrata. Mm. The more information that somebody has, the better likely they are to do well. Really, tasks in general, of any type, are very, very easy to accomplish. One has to first have a clear, reasonable understanding of the direction, of the goal, of where they want to end up in order to channel energies in that direction. The truth is, when it's all said and done, that is all you need to know, is a clear, right understanding of where the energies should end up when you're done. And then one just utilizes one-pointedness, focus constantly along the way in order to do the best of their ability to channel energies in the direction of the goal. You will find in anything you do that if you are able to do that, you will succeed. Period. Along the way, if you're going to work with the energies, it is good to understand the nature and quality of the pieces that you are working with as you go. One of the major problems and reasons for people's failure and problems is that they attempt to have things go against their own nature. Nothing can go against its own nature. And if you try to make it go against its nature, you have to waste energies that we said were meant toward the goal, were meant toward the ultimate direction. These are like the propelling energies. You have to stop aiming them into the end result and use them to change the energies which are against the nature of what you're working with. So, for example, if you want to walk somewheres and end up at some store, and along the way there's an obstacle in the sidewalk, a person who's obstinate type obstacle, if you have your eyes and your mind and all your energy and direction aimed at getting to this store, then you will walk up to this obstacle and you will find a way around the obstacle without having to get involved with the obstacle. It is the nature, for whatever reason, of that person to be obstinate. They like it. Do you want to change their nature? Is that what you want to do? I thought you wanted to get to the store. And as silly and trite as this sounds, this is why people fail. And this is why people succeed. It's all right there. It's all in the exchange direction and focus of energies. If you stop and try to get this person out of the way for the very principle of it, that we all have equal rights on the sidewalk, then you have to stop and ask yourself, is that what I set out as my goal? To prove that we all have equal rights on this sidewalk. Because if it is, then go about your business. If it is to get to the store, then you are best not interfering with the nature of this person because it has nothing to do with your goal. Therefore, you accept and honor. Doesn't mean you agree with, doesn't mean you reinforce, and it doesn't mean you become like. It merely means you honor and accept the nature of all of the things that you run into along the way to your chosen goal. And each time, if you're centered and non-emotional and non-reactionary, you ask yourself, what is the relationship, the best relationship, between the nature of this thing that I have now encountered, the next step in my journey, what is its nature, what is the relationship between its nature and my chosen goal, where I have my eyes? And then working with the nature of this thing, you find the best direction, the best course of energy flow in order to make it around, through, under, above, doesn't matter. 
while this thing has the right to keep its nature, you go about your chosen business. The alternative is to take the propelling energy which is guiding you towards your chosen goal, take it off of your goal, and use it to argue with, disrupt, and fight with the nature of this other thing. I hope you hear that. This is the essence of spirituality. But it's also the essence of success in the world. Because it's all the same thing. It's all energy flows. It's all impersonal. We make it personal. We get involved. We get lost in the energies. And in doing so, we fail at both our earthly pursuits and at spiritual things. So the laws of success are very, very simple. But what they require is a very deep center. They require that while you are picking your goal, that you're not in an emotionally disturbed state. Otherwise, you'll sit there and throw energies this way and then throw energies this way and then throw energies this way. You hearing me? And every time you direct the energies of your being through your thoughts, through your emotions, and through your actions, you are voting. You are casting your vote as to what should unfold in the universe. And most people are crazy. One minute they vote one way, next minute they vote another, next minute they cast a vote this way. They're making a mess. And that's why it is a mess. Please, please listen. That's the only reason it's a mess. is because you're making it a mess. It is not a mess because there's somebody standing in the sidewalk. It is not a mess because each person and each snake and each animal and each tree and the weather and everything has its nature. It is not a mess because of nature. And you best include human beings and their personalities and their idiosyncrasies just as you do the color of the leaves and the height of an oak tree versus a, something else. It is the nature of things. It is not personal that the oak towers above the dogwood. Each thing has its place in nature. Each person, each personality, each thing has its place. Did you say that what you want to do is change all that? Is that what you chose to do with your life? Is come down onto this plane and instead of clearly setting a reasonable focus and direction for where you want to end up across the course of your life, that what you're going to do is somehow, and we'll discuss that in a moment because it's a fascinating process, decide that you know better about how everybody and everything should be and then set about your business to fight with the nature of the things around you to make them be the way you decided they should be and therefore all of your shakti, your energy, all of your divine force is used in conflict is used in fighting in the here and now, the current interactions, and you end up going nowhere. You're like a boat that's driving in a circle instead of scooting off somewhere. I hope you see this. Every time you fight, this is what you're doing. Every time you argue, this is what you're doing. Every time you lose your temper, this is what you're doing. Every time you think that another human being or situation or weather, or anything that is in the nature of things outside of you, every time that you think that that is interfering with your life, you are doing what I'm talking about. Now, how often is that? Pretty often. Because it's not true. The nature of things is an honorable thing. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't mean it doesn't cause pain. It doesn't mean it doesn't cause disturbance. For God's sakes, a snake is a snake. If you take on your goal that every snake on your property is going to behave like a puppy dog, you're not going to enjoy your property. And you're not going to get anything else done. You're going to spend your whole life trying to change the nature of something. Better to perfect your relationship with the snake than to try to change the nature of the snake. Better to perfect your relationship 
with this person or this person than to sit there and decide that you know how that person should be when it's said and done and waste your life and your life force changing the nature of another being instead of working with you and your relationship with that nature. This is so deep. It's so true. And people do not understand this. And so they go and they fight instead of working with. And fighting does not work ever with anything. Not with your children, not with your spouses, not with your parents, not with your teachers, not with your bosses, not with your co-workers, not with anything. Fighting never works because it wastes energy. It takes more energy than what is necessary for the given moment of walking around this person. How much energy does it take to not step on a snake? You just be conscious. It doesn't take any energy at all. It takes much less energy to be aware as you're walking and be conscious than it does to change the nature of the snake so that if you step on it, it won't bite you, doesn't it? This is how you have to think. It takes less energy to walk around an obstacle in the sidewalk to go to your store than it does to move every mountain. Think like that. Be conscious. Be aware of what you are doing with your energies. So the starting position is to aim your eyes, your heart, and your mind at what you mean by a successful life. Most people never thought that. They're just reacting to all the energies around them. They got too messed up in childhood and they're like struggling. Somebody who's drowning isn't thinking about where they're going to go when they get out of the water. They're doing everything they can to keep their head above the water. Most people are in that state. It's been a continuous struggle to not get hurt, to not drown, to not get wiped out. And it's sort of like everything in the here and now to protect oneself or get it reasonable. There's no concept of where do I want on my deathbed to look back and feel that I utilized my life, that I dropped down on this planet spinning around the middle of nowheres and I was given a period of time to walk this planet because that's all that's happening as it spins around the sun. What did I do with that period of time? Did I utilize it wisely? Did I aim myself like an arrow? Did I aim my life in a direction that I wanted to end up when it was done? What do you want when it's done? Just to die? That's it? You're born and you die? There's much more that the soul can express and do and experience during this course of a life. So the first is to set your goals. Very few people do this. It's very sad. And you have to set your goals during a time of clarity. You cannot do it during an emotional or disturbed time, which is when most people set their goals. When things are a mess, they define what they want from life to get out of a mess. That is so non-negative that you end up nowhere. That is not your goal. If you will look at any given moment, your mind and your heart are aimed toward just kind of fixing the fact that Joey talked to you mean or the fact that Sally's not answering the phone and you've called her three times. It gets sucked down to this tiny little meaningless stuff and you're actually utilizing your rocket fuel, which is your Shakti, your energy, in order to put all your mental and emotional and physical behavioral energies toward that stuff as opposed to breathing deep and remembering where are you trying to go here? Where were you going before Sally? Where were you going before you tried to make that call? You can't just keep getting lost. You're like the person who was given a job to build something. You're a carpenter. And so you went to go and pick up the board. And when you got there to the board, there were ants on the board. So you decided you didn't want ants on the board, so you went over to the house to get some insecticide. 
And when you went to get the insecticide, your mother or sister said to you, don't use that stuff, it's poisonous. So you got an argument with them whether this is approved by the FDA and you ended up getting in a car with them and driving to the library in order to find out whether this particular chemical, we're not getting the house built, are we? This is why people cannot succeed in life. We do it with our jobs, things like that, and we sure as heck do it with our relationships. Relationships are so easy. All you do is set your goal. What is your goal? My goal is to have a happy, meaningful, sharing, deep relationship with this person. Now, you have said something, and this other person has said something. Are you caught at this moment saying that my goal is to be right? My goal is to be right because if they think they were right, they'll think I'm wrong all the time. And if they think I'm wrong all the time, I'll never get my way. So I'm going to argue this to the tilt. I'm going to prove with all the power of my mind and all the emotion of my heart. I'm going to protect my space. That doesn't sound anything like what you said your goal was. You took your eyes off your goal. Your goal was to have a happy, meaningful, deep, sharing relationship with this person. How did your goal become to be right in some picky argument? That is no different than on your way to the library to check out the insecticide. You got lost. Now do you see how often you get lost? If during that time something inside could remember my goal is to have a deep, meaningful, sharing, loving relationship with this person, then you will stop the use of your energy in this meaningless side-shoot way. And you'll sit there and say, come on, let's go have an ice cream, this is silly. And you'll have a meaningful, deep, sharing, loving relationship. It's as simple as that. You'll have fun eating an ice cream. Instead of spending the next hour laying some scars on top of each other, leaving impressions of heaviness and all this kind of junk because you were afraid that you wouldn't get your way next time if you didn't prove you were right this time. And this is what you end up doing with your jobs. This is what you end up doing with your relationships. And this is what you end up doing with spirituality. It's because it's so subtle you can't even get your hands on it. So you have one experience or you have one thing or you're inspired for a moment. You say, oh, I'm going to do this. You know, and you meditate three times. You know, and you say, uh, I don't know. I don't feel like doing this now. And in truth, we should be, and you can't keep that one point. And people can't keep that one point in us. And so the laws of success, I want you to see, they are all the same. That's why your worldly life, your daily life, is just as spiritual and just as healthy for your spiritual growth as anything that you do that you call spiritual practices. Because if in this relationship I'm able to remain conscious and I'm the one who redirects the energy in the direction of the meaningful relationship, then I have practiced focus. And when I sit down to meditate and my mind start drifting, I will utilize the same willpower the same centered energy, saying, wait a minute, I sat down here, I, went, I didn't sit down here to think this thing out. I sat down here to meditate. And because you practice it in your everyday life and overcame the part of you that was scared and trying to use the energy for something else, you will find that your meditations go deeply. If you live your whole life this way, your spiritual life will unfold naturally. It will happen absolutely normally. And if when you sit down to meditate, you practice the discipline of bringing yourself back to center, you're going to find in your everyday life that when you get to go to get the board and you come over, there are some ants, that you're going to sit there and say, oh, there's ants over here. And your mind's going to say, hey, maybe I should get rid of them. No, I should build a house. And you'll shake the ants off and go over with your board. It's the same. You practice the same thing in meditation and in everyday life and in relationships and in finance Everything is the same if you are willing to practice these principles. So the first is you set your goals. You must set your goals. And you cannot do it as a reaction to something that's wrong. And you're not going to like this part. You cannot do it as a reaction to something that's right. 
The worst time in the world to set your goals is if you hate somebody or you just fell in love. You don't stand a chance. These are not your lifelong goals. These are emotional reactions that momentarily do something. It's, it's neat. It's, we're so neat. We are funny animals. No one who ever set their goals during times like that went anywhere. Why? Because that energy will not stay there. It is not like that. That is not deep enough. That is not centered enough. It is just an emotional reaction. Another time that's terrible to set your goals is when you're having mental disturbance. When your mind is thinking a lot and giving you a lot of trouble and won't sit down, because then what you're going to do is you're trying to figure out how to make this stop. And you're going to set as your goal, again, non-negative. You don't want your life to be a non-negative experience, do you? But if you don't watch out, that's what's going to happen. If you're lucky, you don't want to hold to that level. So what happens is, every once in a while, and I guarantee you, and it's true of every one of us, every once in a while, you're given a gift of clarity. Every once in a while, you wake up and you're awake. And you walk outside and you're outside. And you see people and they're people. Very rare state that things be what they are, rather than fighting and struggling and grabbing and pushing. But you just have a breath. You know what I'm talking about. You just have a slightly higher state. And you remember you're alive. Walking on a planet in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of absolutely nowhere. And what you got on the test is what you got on the test on the planet in the middle of nowhere. And the fact that you're not sure where your relationship is going is part of being on a planet in the middle of nowhere. And you start feeling a little clearer, a little stronger, a little more global, a little more universal about the thing. That's what I mean by clarity. You stepped back under all conditions. It is a stepping back and getting a bird's eye view that creates clarity as opposed to being caught in the momentary interactions of this stuff. During those times, the purpose of that grace is that you set your goals, is that you take a breath and you remember who you are, a soul within a body, walking on a piece of dirt in the middle of infinity. Isn't it neat that the truth ended up something that the mind can't argue with? I mean, the greatest minds that ever lived cannot argue that you are sitting on a piece of dirt in the middle of infinity. Now, how much meaning you want to give all this melodrama you've been making all day? So when you get some clarity, and please do, when you get some clarity, set your goals. Set the goal of what you want with your life. Not how you want to get out of this problem or not how you want to solve this little need. There are always needs, aren't there? It's part of the package. It has to do with the energy flows. Eventually they will pass when you get high enough. But otherwise, if it's not this one today, it's that one tomorrow. It looks like the greatest need in the whole world to eat something until you get some food in front of you. And the instant, the instantaneous moment that you get the food in front of you, there's something else, isn't there? Please look. Don't think you're rare. Don't be embarrassed. It comes with the territory. It seems like the most unbelievable thing in the whole world to get married. I mean, that's a big one, getting married, finding the right person and getting married. My God, half the world is married and they're miserable. Half the people that get married in this country get divorced. How could it possibly be that, okay, if I take care of that one, it's over? There ain't nothing over. If you are sitting there trying to say that what I'm going to do with my life is satisfy my needs, you're in deep trouble because they are insatiable. It's like the person who sat on her side, I know how I'll stop smoking. I'll just smoke six packs a day until I get so sick of it that I won't ever want to touch another cigarette again. You don't understand energies. Every time you pick up a cigarette, you build a habit of smoking that cigarette. It doesn't become easier, it becomes harder. Sure, you may not stay with six packs, but you ain't quitting. You need to understand energies. So during a time of clarity, and meditation helps to attain those states of clarity, set your real goals. I don't want to know. I want you to know what you want with this life. What do you want to achieve? What do you want to see? Where do you want to end up? What is the purpose and meaning of what you are doing on this piece of dirt in the middle of nowhere. 
You don't have to prove it to anybody else. It's not the kind of purpose that you have to write a book and be some great philosopher. It's for you. It's you. Find that. Then aim toward it. And here's going to become the difference. Some people can go. Most people, even your parents or other people, they have seen some of this stuff. They have thought what do they want with their life and so on. Now let's see you keep aiming the energies that way. Let's see how much of the day you are able to remember that that is the reason you are walking this planet. You are able to remember that what you see as this canopy of blue sky is not, it's just gases that the sun is floating off of. You're on a piece of dirt flinging around the middle of nowheres all day, all night. There is nothing going on. So the question becomes, show me the being who set their direction. It doesn't have to be exact, just your direction, who set their direction. And then I want to see how much of the day they actually consciously remember that that was their direction that they set. And that in the day-to-day interactions with people, places, and things, they bring that to bear. Somebody says something, you feel yourself react, don't you? You We're we're reaction machines, for God's sakes. The emotions go, the mind goes. Are you one who then goes with that and forgets your purpose? Or are you one that when they move, you are centered enough to question, will this take me where I'm going? Will this movement of energy be the rocket fuel, the vector, which is aimed at where I want to end up, at least within reason? Nothing's 100%, all right? Or is this a side shoot of energy that will waste my fuel? And what you will find out is that 99.9999999999 percent of your emotions and your thoughts fall in the latter category. They have nothing to do with where you want to go. They are just fears. They are just anxieties. They are just insecurities. They are just that you carry with you an anchor that if you are trying to aim somewhere, you will find it's not that easy. That all day, from period to period, stuff is popping up that is getting you involved in little picayune stuff. You're getting caught. Those are your samskaras. It's good to see this stuff. You have carried a package with you through your life. The energies you are interacting with on a daily basis hit stuff inside of you, in case you haven't noticed. That causes energies to shoot out. Those are your emotions, the sparks when things short circuit or hit come up as emotions. Those emotions cause thoughts. Things cause thoughts. If the soul, the consciousness, which has purpose and direction, is focused, gets involved in this neurotic, temporary stuff that is popping up like popcorn with everything that goes on on a daily basis, you are wasting your energy and you will not become what you are which is a very great being. You're not some little picayune ant. You are something very, very great, every single one of you, period. There is something very great inside, but there is also something very yicky inside. I think it was Walt Whitman who said in one of his poems, or he was talking, he was quoted as saying that every human being you meet can be two people. One is so awesome that your knees quiver to stand in their presence and you have to do everything in your power not to fall down before them. And the other is so disgusting that you just want to turn and walk away. That is the difference between the being who has channeled their energy, pulled it back to the consciousness and maintained a purpose, a focus, and the being who is just going with the junk that is inside of them. So first, you pick your purpose. 
And then second, you struggle. You will struggle. It's okay to struggle. You will struggle to remain conscious so that you can keep the energy channeled towards your purpose. How do you do that? There are a million billion ways. We've discussed some before. You want a simple way? You set your purpose. That's none of my business. Now you'll come to me and say, I set my purpose and I remembered it about uh, three times a year. How will you bring that to every day, to every minute of every day? When it is every minute of every day, you become a great being. Don't you think that's not true? All you have to do is remember. And greatness will take place because all the Shakti will become one-pointed. Yogananda used to say it's like the difference between the sunlight that shines all day and holding a magnifying glass up to the very same sunlight. One is a little bit more powerful than the other, isn't it? One has the power to burn through anything and the other just scatters. When you focus, when you stay one-pointed, when you keep your clarity of purpose, you become the magnifying glass and the Shakti is the sun. And it shines through you and it becomes a focal point of light. And you become something very special and very great. Not just for you, not just for your success in this world or relationships or your spirituality. You become what's called a beacon of light. You become a being of light. Every single one of you is capable of that but not if you're sitting there scattering your energies all over the place. Because at some point, at some time, somebody's going to say something that will freak you out. And you will lose your purpose. And running around and leaving and doing all kinds of weird stuff that people do. So basically, first set your purpose. Second, how will you keep the focus? Let's just play a game. How often do you walk through doors every day? Car doors, office doors, house doors, bathroom doors, a lot of doors. Just play a game. Every single time you walk through a door, remember your purpose. You won't be able to do it at first, but you will be able to do it. That's not that hard, is it? Is that asking too much to become great? That you set a purpose and every time you walk through a door, you stop for a, a second. It won't be embarrassing, don't worry. Although I want you to notice how embarrassed you get even stopping for a second. Just stop for a second. Remember. And when you see the part of you that's afraid to or thinks, well, I'm walking with this person, I don't have to now, or anything like that, you will see what stops you from being great. Because that's the little self, this one that's so concerned about what people think about you. I didn't hear that that was your purpose, to be so concerned about what everybody in the world thinks about you at every moment. I sure hope you didn't pick that as your purpose, because you're going to be the most unhappy person that ever walked the face of the earth. So you see every minute you have the right to choose between your higher and lower self, between your focused, purposeful being and this neurotic, reactionary, scared, insecure person. So when you walk through that door, remember your purpose, train yourself. At first, you will have to stop and you will see the embarrassment. Like I said, you will see all the stuff come up from underneath. Don't listen to it. That's part of the struggle. That's part of channeling your energy. These energies that were down here in this lower center, making all this noise and disturbing you, by stopping and taking that breath and remembering, you are forcing those energies to come to the higher level. At first, it will be difficult. Over time, it will just happen naturally. You will not walk through a single door without remembering who you are. And all of a sudden, you're going to find that on the other side of that door, there's more light than there ever was before. You'll think, gee, people are a lot nicer than they used to be. Boy, God's being much nicer to me. There are less obstacles. There's less problems. Everything seems to be working. I'm telling you, just doing that will change your life. Because otherwise, you're throwing your energies all over the place. So this is your work. And these are the laws of success. It requires one-pointed focus. But I don't want to teach you to one-pointed focus on how to make money. Blech. And I don't want to teach you one-pointed focus on how to have a deep and meaningful relationship. You set your focus on something much greater 
money, relationships, these are part of the process of life. It's wonderful. It's like breathing. It's like food. They will naturally come to you. They will naturally happen. You don't have to set them as your focus. You set as your focus something much higher, much greater, much clearer. The focus of your life. Don't set something that you, you sit there and say money, but then the market can change or this can happen and all of a sudden your whole purpose is gone. You're throwing yourself out of the Wall Street windows like the 30s. All right? Don't set as your focus some relationship because eventually someone's going to die. Then what? You lost the entire purpose of your life because somebody died? I think you set your eyes too low. What do you think? The purpose of your life encompasses your entire life from birth until death. And if you will set your eyes there, you will be able to weather the storms of anything that takes place. And you will channel all of the energies of relationships and non-relationships, of good and bad, of wealth and poverty. All of these things should fit within your purpose. And then as they happen, you channel the energies up and you keep going. Now once you have that, never turn your eyes from that. Never. And I want to see what happens to you. You will become a being of light. Your face will glow. Your hands will become soft like a baby's. Your walk will have a bounce in it. You will float on this earth. And anyone who comes near you will be raised. Just you will have complete clarity because you stayed purposeful and focused. So this is what the Buddhists call right action, right purpose. This is the teachings of yoga in terms of one-pointedness, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and so on. They're just being used and utilized both at your worldly life, your emotional relationship life, and your spiritual life. You work with these things and you will never have another problem for the rest of your life. Mm, Jagrata.